Everybody, y'all listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Hey, man, back in business, too. Man, Whew. man, how good is God? I mean, really, if you think about it, in spite of all that's going down in your life, first of all, it could be worse, but secondly, sometimes you have to remember. And I've just had to have this conversation with myself this morning. That's how I'm fresh on this one right here. When a challenge faces you, or you're going through a difficult moment, or you didn't hit a bump in the road, in the middle of that, if you can manage to be grateful, it would take you a long way. Gratitude is a powerful resource. If you can be grateful in the middle of it, gratitude is a powerful resource. When it's dim for you, and it got a little bumpy on the road, and you ran into some obstacles, and you done ran up into some detour signs, and your journey ain't smooth as it was last week or or last year. You got to be grateful for the things that are going right and that have gone right and for the thing that's wrong right now to get right. Man, can I share that with you? Man, is that a tough one to learn. It is for me. It has been one of my toughest challenges is to learn how to be grateful because it's a powerful resource, but how to be grateful in moments of despair when it ain't going right. See, here's a mistake I would make. See, when something go wrong, I want to focus on the wrong so much in an attempt to fix it. But even then, the focus ain't always in the fix it. The focus becomes, man, this is bad. Man, I can't believe this is happening. Why does keep going down? That doesn't fix anything. You know, uh, mealing over it, going over what's wrong, explaining it, sharing it with your friends, you know, making it sound worse than it is, tell the story for pity from other people. All of that right there has nothing to do with the fix. Sometimes you're just mulling over it. You're just making it worse. You're just making it a bigger problem. You're, you're manifesting it into your atmosphere. You're putting it out there in your spirit. Now, all of a sudden, it consumes your day. Next thing you know, you're having a bad day. If you're having a bad day, it's because you've been having some bad thoughts. So what I've had to learn how to do and what I'm working on this morning is I'm working on the situation that then cropped up. I was going kind of smooth here for a minute, and now I then got real bumpy in the road. You know, and all this here. So what I'm thinking about now, though, is even though I've hit a bump in the road and even though I done ran into a detour and even though I, I've hit this lull, I've, I'm going down into a valley. I ain't up on the peak. Can I not still be grateful for all the things that God has given me, for all the things he's done for me, for all the things he's brought me through? And realizing that even this that's happening to me again is going to pass, too. He going to get me through that, too. Come on, man. God is a good God, man. It's a lot to be grateful for. So while I'm tripping on this bump in the road out in here, what I got to remember is all the things he's done for me. And like I say, my saying is joy and depression cannot reside in the same place. So instead of being down about this new bump in the road, if I'm constantly filling my mind with the thoughts of how good he's been to me, of what all he's done for me, of all the things he's brought me through, of all the blessings he's presented me with. When I go down that list, I really don't have a lot of time to mull over the situation. Now, do I have to fix this bump in the road? Of course I do. Are there some things I'm going to have to do to straighten it out? Of course it is. But, Steve, just go on and get the business of doing it and straighten it out. What you mulling over and worrying about it for? You know, old people, I heard old people say something when I was growing up in the church. They say, if you're going to pray about it, don't worry about it. But if you're going to worry about it, don't pray about it. That's an amazing thing. And prayer just happens to be my weapon of choice. Now, it ain't always been that way. I want you to understand that. My first weapon of choice was you do it to me, I do it to you. You call me out, I call you out. You say something bad about me, I've tried to find you and say something bad about you. That was my weapon in the past. How did that work out for you, Steve? 
not so good. Because you know what? I spent a lot of time fighting back, kicking back, swinging back, when I could have spent all that time climbing. See, all you're trying to do at the end of the day, folks, is have a better life than the one you got. All you're trying to do is improve your position in life. You know, it's not my business to make sure you don't get where you're going. I ain't got no time for that. It's not my job to assure that you ain't as high as me. I ain't got no time for that. Your real mission and purpose is to have the best life that you can have, to ascend to the highest plateau that you can get to, to make your family as comfortable as you can, to provide as much as you can for your family, but legally. See, those of us that are sitting up here trying to come up with sideways, you can ask a couple million men sitting in prison today how they wish they hadn't have done that. And they'll tell you, oh, man, I wish I never had did it. I knew not to go down there. Something told me not to go down there. Man, if I could change things, I would. But they sitting somewhere doing some time that had they made another decision, they wouldn't have to do. Now, that don't make them throw away people. No, nah, man. Because everybody make mistakes, and God is in the forgiving business. And some of us have done some things that really broke the law and a whole lot of other things and deserve to do some time, but through the grace of God, we didn't. But now we sit up here and we pass judgment on people who got to do some. Man, I don't care. I don't care what you've done. God can forgive anything. But our position, our motivation in life is to try to have the best life we can have and provide for those around us and make it comfortable. If that's your ambition, you don't have time to worry about or concern yourself with another person. And I wasted time doing that. And that's not the way to get it done. It's simply mind to your business. Taking care of you and getting yourself right and tight is 24-7. So that's a full-time job. So what I had to learn was, and what I've the reason I've chosen prayer as as my weapon of choice now, is that now prayer helps me that I don't have to fight back. Now, if I get cornered, I'm going to fight you. I, I, I ain't even going to lie to you. And I'm still working on some things that trigger me, you know, you, you know, you, you know, and, 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 and so I'm, 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 I'm slowly getting better at that, but I've learned that my weapon of choice is prayer now. So when it happens ugly for me, I pray about it. When it get tight and dismal for me, I pray about it. And the thing about prayer, man, is prayer changes things. Yes, it does now. Read about it and try it. That's the deal, okay? Come on. Prayer is a wonderful weapon. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hi, I'm Frida. And I'm Arthi. We have spent the last 20 years building and working at some of the largest companies in the world. Tell them you're married. And yes, we've been married for over a decade. We work with some remarkable people. We are going to talk to them about things no one else talks to them about, and they will tell us their secrets. Elon Musk. A meme's like actually kind of a complex form of communication. Like a picture says a thousand words, and maybe a meme says 10,000 words. Rob McElhinney. When I see the people of Wrexham, I grew up exactly like them, and I think that that transcends culture. I think it transcends race. Gary Vaynerchuk. My greatest strength is humility. When you don't think you're special to begin with, you're not overly worried about tricking fancy people to think you're special. So join us. Check out the Arthi and Sriram show. That is A-A-R-T-H-I and S-R-I-R-A-M show. Listen to the Arthi and Sriram show on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, let me have your divided attention, please. This is the beginning of a new day. This is the start of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Let us begin. Three, two, one. What's up, Shirley? Hey, what's up, Steve? <laughs> Carla? What's going on, Steve? Hey, crew. Hey, Julia. Big dog. What's that? What's going on? on the porch. Nephew Tommy. Doggy dog. I see you, boy. <laughs> you sound like you're on the porch and we're passing by. And you're but as a girl, like I always want it. Yes. 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 <laughs> Ain't nothing like right the porch. You drive that thing. Drive that thing, boy. You're <laughs> 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 so crazy, Steve. Oh, we were hey, what's up, Monica? Monica? Oh, oh, you act like you don't know nobody. <laughs> 
Always oh, look cute there, girl. Walking around the water, holler back at the fence. <laughs> Bobby Wobeck. <laughs> if you think you're lonely now. <laughs> Baby, till tonight. Yeah. I love it. If you think yeah. you're not. You know, I think I'm going to go down the store and get me a watermelon. <laughs> That's what you got to say. Now, 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 let me ask you something. When you, now I got when you, for watermelon. When you thump a watermelon, what you listening for? No, I don't thump watermelons. Well, I know how to pick watermelons. Oh, oh yeah. I thought you were supposed to thump them. No, know. dog. What you going to tell about a thump? This is how you pick a sweet watermelon. Okay, how do you where the do stem it? comes out the bottom, where it has the stem on yeah, it, yeah. or where the stem mm-hmm. used to be. Uh-huh. If you see a lot of, you know, those veins, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. the little veins on the outside, uh-huh. on the outside mm-hmm. that's sugar content. Oh, mm. oh, so that means it's a sweet, ripe That's right. watermelon. Okay. That's right. Okay. Now, you can pick a sweet one that don't have it, because mm-hmm. so like them dark green ones don't oftentimes show a lot of veining. Mm-hmm. But when you pick them light green with them long ones, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah, old school. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you say, huh? huh? That that right there? <laughs> when it got a lot of brown veins coming around off that stalk, that stem, that sugar content. Oh, so ah, that means it's right that's how you ready. Okay. Boy, now you if know, you they, got, they thump them down south. I didn't. That, yeah, so, well, you know, yeah, you, you, don't, you don't know how to store. do that because you don't buy enough of them. You don't grow them. If you grow watermelons, you can thump them. But you don't know okay. what you even looking for. Okay, well, yeah, when they what, thump, what you looking for? Yeah, that's what I I'm don't know. I don't know what I'm listening for. So now you just thumping. <laughs> And take this ragged ass watermelon right on to the house. <laughs> and and are we do are we doing seeds or seedless? Because I like seeds. No, it, it, see, there's no watermelon that don't have seeds in it. All watermelon got seeds. But but yeah, but you know they have seedless watermelons. That's, it, that's gemet- genetically you that? modified, surely. I can read. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I know. It's but, at a store like yeah, that. It, yeah, I know, but that ain't the real. Them out, then, but that ain't the real. Real watermelons have seeds in it. Right. Oh, real fruit. that's what I thought. Let me tell you something. Go to Africa and seeds. and you be trying to find seedless watermelon the whole time you over there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like none. seeds. I want the yeah. seeds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just a little country lesson on how to pick a watermelon. That's vein content. The vein yeah. Because we get, cause we buy, we're approaching watermelon season. Yes, when is it is. exactly? July to September. Your ass, that's watermelon time. Come on now. <laughs> Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, it's the nephew and run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now to start your morning off with the nephew and run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Well, let me see if I can see how stupid I can get this morning, Shirley. I'm gonna try to get, I'm gonna try to multiply that thing by five this time. Let me see a Mm -hmm. problem at the ballet. All right, all minds clear. Good, (laughs) cat dog, cat dog. If you would, let's go. Problem at the ballet. Hello. Hey, Orlando. Hey, Tommy. How's it going? Hey, man. What's going on? You doing all right? I'm doing good. Doing good. Uh, What's up? Hey, listen. I need you to do something for me. But do you need uh, your uh, your car details? Or... No, 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 not this week. Listen, I got something I want you to do for me. I'm doing a prank phone call, and I want you to call this guy and, and tell him you're the valet downstairs. Ask him for his ticket number and tell him, hey, we got a little bit of an issue, but my, my manager's going to call you back. Uh, are you sure you want me to do it? You're the valet guy. That's all you got to do, all right? Why does the Mexican guy got to be at the valet guy and you get to be the manager? What's up with that? Just make this. I'm going to click over and make the call. All I want you to do is just tell him you're, you're the valet guy. Will you do that for me? All right, man. I got you. All right. All right. All right. Hang on. Just hang on. Uh, hello? Uh, hello. Is this Mr. Franklin? Yes. Can I ask who's calling? Oh, uh, yes. Um, I'm, uh, I'm Orlando with valet. Uh, did you park a Lexus with us about 30 minutes ago? Yeah, I did. What's what's going on? What's this about? I'm just going to need your ticket number real quick. There's a small issue, and uh, once you get the ticket number, I could um, have my manager just call you back. Five three four six. But why do you why do you need my ticket number? Is there something wrong with my car? Did something happen? Um, my manager will call you back, and he'll give you all the details. Okay, so so something did happen to my car? Um, once I give my manager your ticket number, uh, he'll call you back shortly, and he'll uh, tell you everything. Okay, well, can you have him give me a call as soon as possible? Because I would like to know what 
happen to my car if something happens. This is, I don't, I don't really understand what's going on here. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have to go. But you can't tell me anything else before you leave. I mean, there's no details that you can give me about anything with my car. Uh, like I said, my manager will handle it. I, I have to get going. Perfect, Orlando. That's perfect. All right, I got it from you, bro. I appreciate it. Let's call him back. Hello. Hello. Is this uh, is this Mr. Franklin? Yeah, this is he can ask who's calling. This is Cliff, man. I'm the manager here down at the valet. Oh, great. Thank you. I've been waiting to hear from you. Oh, my God. 30 minutes ago, you you pulled in with a, they're telling me a silver, a uh, light gray Lexus. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's my car. What What's going on with my car here? Okay, and what's your number? Is it 5346? Yeah, that's, that's my number. I mean, I already went through this with the other guy. Can you just tell me what the hell is going on with my car? Okay, are you able to come downstairs right now? No, I can't. I valeted over there. I'm at a, I'm at a, a lunch with a client somewhere else. I'm not there right now. I, why do I need to come down right now? Can you just, what is happening? Okay, so here's the deal, sir. We have a, we have a, a, a one of the um, valet workers here has gotten mad and he left. He quit the job, and he's he's gone. He's left the premise. The problem we're having right now is we don't see your car. What you know, the and you don't see. It. What do you? What? I'm sorry. What? What? Um, okay. 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 Oh, wow. All right. So my car is gone. My car is gone. Is that what you're telling me right now? Somebody quit uh, your company we're, and we're, took we're, my we're, car. Well, well, hang on. We're looking on every floor and we're trying to figure out if if it got parked somewhere else. But he's gone, and what? we're we're. That's why we called to get your number what, on there. Parked somewhere else, man. What the. F- do you mean? Do I have a car or not? Did my car get stolen? How many floors do you have? How long does it take? I just f-ing bought that car. That is a brand new f-ing car, and now it's just I, vanished. I, Are you kidding me I, right now? Well, hold on, hold on. I understand. I understand. Let me ask you something. Is there a way? Um, is there a way maybe you can come by tomorrow and we can try to work something out and just see a, you know? No, there is no way I'm coming by tomorrow for a car that's missing today. First of all, we need to get the police involved in this. I don't even know why. Wait, 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 wait. Shut up. Oh, Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin. Mr. Franklin. Police right now. Mr. Mr. No, Mr. Franklin, we don't want to get the police involved in this. We who is we? we? Who is we? Because I damn sure want to get the police involved. So who is we? I'm just saying, we are the, I'm, listen, I don't want to lose my job because we lost a car. If you just give me some time to find the car, that's all I want you to do is give me some time. Let me go by this guy's house where he lives and see if the car is there. You should already be in a car driving your b- ass to this man's house talking to me right now, okay? The fact that you're not there is malpractice. I'm calling the police. I'm suing the b- building owner. I'm suing the manager. I'm suing the b- who made the valet box. I'm suing everybody affiliated with your b- business. Do you understand me right now? I, I, okay, but listen, hey, Mr. Franklin, listen, why, are you, why, are you, why are you upset with me? I didn't do nothing. I didn't take the car, okay? Why are, upset with you? Why, are you responsible for this parking lot? Are you a manager? I, what is your occupation, I'm, sir? What I'm, do you do? I'm, the manager. I'm the manager here. I'm, and Orlando called you earlier, okay? And we're trying to find out where the car is. We I are. I really feel like it. You don't even want the police involved, man. You're not trying to find sh- You're trying to cover your ass right now. I'm mad at Orlando. I'm mad at you. I'm mad at your company. I'm mad at the man who put the damn asphalt down in the parking lot. I'm mad at everybody right now, okay, Cliff? Okay, okay, real, okay. But calm down. Okay, but let me ask you this here. Are you, are you, are you mad at, um... Are you mad at your wife? What? what my wife's mad at my wife. My wife didn't steal my damn car. Ain't your wife named Carrie? How the hell do you know my wife's name? You know how I know your wife's name? Because your wife got me to call you. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning. Oh, <laughs> damn. Franklin, you just got pranked, baby. By oh, damn. Oh, Ooh, boy. We're going to marriage counseling for this one. This is... <laughs> Y'all have, you had you had your boy. <laughs> she said he just bought this car. He loves this car. He outside sitting in it when he ain't going nowhere. Wow. I can't believe it. Man, it's, always, it's always the closest people. It's all, and you know, i tell you what. i tell you who is not getting to ride in this car for a long time. She knows what's happening. She knows what it is. Hey, man, tell me this. What is the baddest, and I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? It's the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Come on.
Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO, our Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey, in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time to ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey, in the building. This one is from May in Culver City, California. It says, in regards to your live strawberry letter with the cheating man, I have a similar situation. I had an affair on my husband, and the first time I cheated, I got pregnant. I couldn't let my husband raise another man's child without knowing it, so I had a DNA test and confessed. My husband chose to stay in the marriage and raise the child as his own. But whenever the spirit hits him, he calls me names and makes my life miserable. In this case, is is divorce a better choice or are his actions justified? Well, I mean, Whoa. you know, let let me let, let me do like women should all do. If the shoe was on the other foot and your husband went outside the marriage and had another baby and you decided to stay, would you not call him a bunch of names whenever the spirit hit? Uh, How about every birthday? Yeah, that's all the Christmas money when that child support going out the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's a heck of a man to stay and raise it as his own, Mm -hmm. and 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 then he spared you the shame of it. But I mean, well, you're gonna throw it in the face. See, the thing about saying I'm sorry is, it 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 it, that don't fix it. Mm -hmm. Uh, He may eventually stop doing it. But if you can't take it and you want to get a divorce, that's on you. Yeah. But where the dude that they gave you the baby at in the first, but where he at? She didn't say, Steve. Well, I don't Um, see him raising his hand, volunteer. (laughs) And I ain't saying saying stay and take any form of abuse. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. Because that's not right at any level. Mm -hmm. You know, but... He gonna he gonna throw it up in your face every now and then. I I don't know how that works. I he's I'm I'm not really sure I could do that. So I don't, I don't think I'm the perfect person. To have. Yeah. I think once you do it, you gotta you gotta you gotta accept it. But you can't keep throwing it back at him. You decide you gonna. Right. Yeah, that sound real I, good. I, right. Yeah. I mean it that sounds good. good. Exactly. But right, if you're gonna say you you're gonna accept the baby and raise him as your own, but. But so much of the time, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could take that. That's tough, yeah. Because you're only yeah. human, so it's going to be some moments. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, all right, we're moving on. Joseph in the Bronx, CLO, says, My boss and I have the same birthday, so we went out two weeks ago after work and celebrated. She's got a husband that's very jealous-hearted, so she told him we were uh, where she was going and invited him to join us. We invited other co-workers, but they didn't show up. My boss's husband was waiting for us as we walked out of the restaurant. He got in my face and said he'd beat my mm -mm mm-mm-mm if I ever tried anything with his wife. I was ticked off and wanted to fight him, but I need my job. How do I settle this? Come on, CLO. Well, I mean, bro, you can't go out with the man's wife no more. Period. I don't give a damn if y'all got the same birthday. His boss. I don't care. <laughs> she got a husband. She invited him. He didn't go. He probably walked up to the door and saw y'all sitting over there by yourself and decided not to go in. Because mm. he going to handle it outside. Mm-hmm. So well, now what nobody, so now he done told you. What you want me to do? Hey, look, apologize. Send the man a letter. Tell him, tell, tell him you didn't mean no harm. It won't happen again, and it won't happen again. She can't fire you for this now, homie. Mm-hmm. Oh, I done took the class. <laughs> what? She cannot fire oh. you for this. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. HR. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. according to the class I took, she has created a hostile work environment for you. You yeah. felt obligated to go because it was your boss. Had mm-hmm. you go to celebrate the birthday, you didn't want to say no because you didn't want to affect your job. Now you feel like it's in a hostile environment because her damn husband all up in your face. Mm. And that's huh. in the class. <laughs> that's <laughs> in the class. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I take just that took class. it. <laughs> <laughs> so how should he settle it then, Steve? And I'm telling you, sir, as an active bystander, mm-hmm. which is what I'm being. Mm-hmm. 
just apologize and I would apologize to the man and get it on record that I had to apologize to him. Yeah, because yeah, he's yeah. not his boss. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, now, so- he is going to whoop your ass. You can believe it. <laughs> and he can't fight back because yeah. his wife is his boss? Yeah. No, 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 no. Right there. Yeah, that's crazy. No, no, no. Once he starts swinging, hand your business, boy. Okay. Yeah. There you go. All right. That's better. <laughs> but All right, HR Sophia. <laughs> Sophia in Dallas. But says, HR offices are usually never in parking lots. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia in Dallas says, I'm 42 years old and I'm dating a man that's 11 years younger than I am. Uh, we're both financially secure and we've both got nice houses. After a year of dating, I finally met his mom when she came to visit him. His mom asked my age and I thought he had told her that I was older. She started calling me a sugar mama and pointed out that she's only 12 years older than me. He didn't defend me and said it's not that big of a deal. Am I overthinking it? Mm. Well, he didn't defend you. Mm-mm. You're 12 years younger than his mama. Mm. 11 years older than him. 11 years older than him. Mm-hmm. So what are you saying, CLO? Well, got sugar mama wrote on it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, but if y'all in a good place and y'all got a good relationship, yeah. whose business is it? It really ain't his mama's business. Y'all been y'all been at this for a year. But that's the thing. He didn't speak up. He didn't say anything to his mom when she started calling her names. Well, sugar mama kind of sweet, don't you know, sugar? Oh, stop. (laughs) (laughs) You know way better than that. You know shade with Uh that. You know, sugar mama better than black ass cougar now. Come on. (laughs) Come on now. All right. Well, thank you, CLO. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's Tanya Sam, host of the Money Moves podcast powered by Greenwood, financial literacy podcast where we get straight to the steps to financial stability, wealth, and abundance. And we are back for season two with guests like Will Packer, Rich Fresh, Annie Gonzalez, and so many more entrepreneurs and experts sharing how they are making their money move. You know, if I look back, I mean, to be in that role at 25, right. was I talented? Was I skilled? Was I capable? Absolutely. Did I have all the tools? Absolutely not. <laughs> Tune in for new episodes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to start getting your money moving. Before I could ever walk into a room and say, give me, you know, tens of millions of dollars to produce a girl's trip, I needed to show that I could take a much smaller amount of money and be successful with that. I could raise a little bit of money and produce a little movie and then turn that little movie into a success. Listen to season two of Money Moves powered by Greenwood on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey there, I'm entertainment and lifestyle reporter Tommy D'Addario. I've been doing interviews on the red carpet for quite a while, but only so much can be said in such little time. I'm often left wanting more. That's why I started this podcast, to create a space to get to even deeper, more meaningful conversations. On my new show, I've never said this before. I'll be talking to different artists and the stars of your favorite movies and shows and getting the full story. We'll be talking about their favorite projects, their journeys to success, and all the things they've learned along the way. And of course, as the title suggests, I'll also be asking all of my guests to tell me at least one thing that they've never said before. So join me for a conversation you won't want to miss. Subscribe now and listen to I've Never Said This Before with Tommy D'Addario on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. It is time for Comedy Roulette. Take it away, Jay. Take four subjects, put them on a the wheel, spun the wheel, wedged out, we do the damn thing. I All right, here we go. Here go the subjects. <laughs> uh, things you say to talk your way out of a butt whooping. Mm-hmm. Your favorite lunchtime meal at school. Good one. Mm-hmm. Stuff you say to yourself when you're trying to lose weight. Ooh. <laughs> I've said some things. Okay. <laughs> uh, number four, things you say when you're lost. All right. Spun it. Yeah, spun here it. we go. Spin the wheel. I like it, Jay. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, come on. Lose weight, lose weight. Girl, I'll be talking to myself. Uh, <laughs> what is it? What is it? Things you say to talk your way out of a butt whooping. Okay. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I want to hear the. Yeah, let's go, yes. Jay. I'll go first. I'll uh-huh. go first. Yeah. The classic. The very classic. This is the classic. I ain't going to do it no more. 
<laughs> yes. Come on, Junior. <laughs> okay. Here's one I used a lot. It wasn't just me. All of us was doing it. <laughs> Tolo. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> Snitch. Truth be told, Mama. Truth be told, Daddy the one broke the dog on plate. <laughs> Daddy the one. It ain't had nothing to do with me. He told me don't say nothing to you. You got a double bubble. <laughs> Come on, Steve. <laughs> I was not ever even in there. <laughs> we. I oh, was. This, <laughs> this is the one going to get you a real bad butt whooping. Uh -huh. If you beat me, I'm going to tell Grandma. Oh. 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 Oh, yeah. that's at the house. All right. Yeah. Things you say to talk your way out of a butt whooping. Junior, go. Mama, I don't, I don't really want to tell you this right now, but I feel a crisis starting. <laughs> <Yeah>. Junior. <laughs> It worked. <laughs> he said it worked. <laughs> Come on, now. That's terrible. <laughs> that the hospital just is healthy. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Uh -huh. I don't. Uh huh. But your car already had a dent on it. It did. <laughs> I ain't had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Things you say to talk your way Somebody out of a butt whooping, it. Steve. Would, would you want me to beat you? <laughs> huh? Play on those guilt strings. Mama, yeah. mama, would you want me to beat you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, things you say to talk your way out of a butt whooping. Come on, Jay. <laughs> Please don't beat me because the last time you beat me, I had real bad nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have some more. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Junior. Come on, Junior. <laughs> Things you say to keep him getting the bubble. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mama, Daddy having an affair. <laughs> <laughs> you going in. I flipped the script, didn't it? That'll stop it. Uh -huh. I'll stop it right away. Yeah. <laughs> Mama, look me in my eyes before you whoop me and just tell me, what would Jesus do? <laughs> What would Jesus do, Mom? <laughs> what would he do? Go ahead, Steve. We Christians, Mama. We Christians. <laughs> we Christians. Come on, Steve. Go ahead, Steve. I thought y'all loved me. <laughs> oh, you dramatic? Ow. This is All these method actors. This okay. Is, I, I know you're going to beat me, but before you beat me, could I just have a hug? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to get it. Yeah. <laughs> Things you say to talk your way out of a butt whooping. These are some good ones, boy. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, you you said if I made all A's, you would leave me alone. <laughs> you made all A's? We made, made all A's? You think like if you did good in school, you would get whooped? Uh -huh. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> so, Mama, what this about? This really about them telling me. I'm really not your son. Is that, <laughs> what, you oh, wow. is that what this is? Oh, that's below the belt. <laughs> <laughs> Things you say to talk your way out of a butt whooping team. I, I thought you was my mama. Well, I'm finna tell your butter. <laughs> Let's pray first, mama. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a good one right there. With Call, that on. One. Oh. Call on it. Call that's on it. <laughs> that's it right there. <laughs> oh, here you go. I think you just mad because daddy lost his job and you taking it out on me. <laughs> oh, that's another one. That's two. Oh, you really fit to get your ass beat. All right. Your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Things you say to keep him getting the butt with Come on, Junior. Wait, wait, Mama, wait a minute. What about your arthritis, though? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tommy, come on. Things you say you, to tuck your way out of a butt with Before what? you do this right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> what? Mama, I got a baby on the way. Oh, what? <laughs> what? How old are you? <laughs> That's a good job. Oh, yeah. I got a baby oh, yeah. on the way. I'm nine. I got a baby on the way. <laughs> Things you say to talk your way out of a butt whooping. Close it out, Steve. Uh -uh. Have we not learned anything from slavery? <laughs> Uh, 
Just think about uh-huh. it. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for a round of Would You Rather. All right, guys, here we go. Would you rather work four day weeks or work two months on and one month off? Hey, Andy. Think about that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I want what? two months on. I do even want One month yeah. off. Hell yeah. 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 Hell yeah. yeah. Skip a four-day work week. <laughs> I better do them four-day weeks. I better do that. That one month off, I'm going to forget I'm working. I got to do that. <laughs> no. no. You're going to be wilding. <laughs> two months on, one uh-huh. month off. Yes. You like that, Steve? Yeah, yeah. I like that, too. Hell yeah, all yeah. day. Because you were in Vegas for 30 days. It was sick. Yes, baby, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Would you rather have another 10 years with your partner or a one-night stand with your celebrity crush? Hey. Mm. Oh. A lot of silence. <laughs> Just, just A. Just okay, so radio. Junior is going I don't, I don't with, understand. Would you rather have another 10 years with your partner, or would you rather have a one-night stand with your celebrity crush? What? Oh, you, you don't get your partner no more? Mm-mm. No. <laughs> so okay, have yeah. both of them? Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, you crazy. cannot. Uh-uh. <laughs> Junior no, picked no. A. I'm taking the 10 uh, years. What the hell I want with one I'm night? I'm going to take A. To a hell of a 10 <laughs> Oh, you said it. Why do you sound upset about it? I gone over here where I've been just sit down. <laughs> oh. Till Helen once again now. <laughs> you know the real shocker for you when you discover Halle don't want you. <laughs> I sure wish I could arrange that. <laughs> she don't want she don't want the one night stand. <laughs> right. Or or the ten years with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather be in jail for five years or be in a coma for a decade? Jail for five or a coma for ten? Ooh. No, I'm going to do this jail. I'm going to take the jail. Really? Yeah, I'm like, Hell yeah. I'm going to take that coma and give, I'm gonna take that coma and give me some rest. I, 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 <laughs> night, night. <laughs> Boy, coma, when you come out that coma, you and I can't tell you how poor your ass is. <laughs> I don't like people just coming in and visit me when I'm in the hospital. <laughs> no, you getting all your no, no, you know what you're going to wait. You know what you're going to look like? <laughs> A beard. How long will his beard be? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, you would rather go to jail for jail five, for five years. years? I can't do that jail Than be in a coma for ten. Ten. I'm just laying up here. I ain't. I didn't miss everything. <laughs> I'm hilarious in jail. <laughs> dog, I get me some. Dog, I get some groups together in prison. And, yeah. What? <laughs> nah. I'm in that cutting deal. I'm with oh, you, nephew. Oh, on that that one. All right. That's today's round of Would You Rather. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Uh, Come on, Cheryl. Just say it. I'm going to ask you. It's the nephew with side piece. All right, y'all. This is what it is. is, Hey, hey, hey. hey, Just come on, man. I'm going to ask the Uh. question that side pieces will ask. And I'm going to let Tommy respond. So, Tommy, Uh if your side piece asks you, when can I call you? You can't. You can't. If I don't call you, we don't talk. That's all that is. Wow. You don't. You don't call me. I do the call. Mm. Okay. okay. Can I ask you? Here's another. Go ahead. When can I text you? Same answer as before. <laughs> if I don't text you, we don't text. You wait. I start everything. Yeah. So okay. When we hang up, when we you? hang up yeah. the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you something. When we when we hang up the phone, if you forgot to say something and, and, and you got to wait till I call you back. Yeah. Okay, here's That's the next no. question. Mm. Can we spend the night together? Yeah, of course. Of course, but my night in is six forty five. <laughs> I gotta get my ass home. <laughs> What I, uh-uh. Get your nephew! Yeah. What, what time your night in? Six forty-five. My night. Oh. Nah. We okay. lay up on each other from three p.m. 
hug and everything. Yeah. <laughs> all that. Become 645. <laughs> I got to go. Yeah. And this is PM or AM? PM. PM. Yeah. Yeah. Night time. Yeah. We get we gonna watch the six o'clock news together. Right okay. after that. I'm gone. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. All right, Tommy, here's the next question. Uh-huh. Can you give her a nickname? Yeah. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> Same thing I call my wife. Baby. What I ain't finna do. What I ain't finna do is say the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, baby. Everybody, baby. Okay, let me ask you a question. Will you buy a gift for your side piece like cologne? Yeah, yeah, cologne tonight. You can get that. But it's going to be the same damn cologne my wife wears. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm not going to come home smelling like no other woman. You're going to get a smell. Uh, smell my wife smell. You're going to smell like her. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay, here's another one. Can she introduce you to her friend? Oh, okay. Hell no. They don't need to know I exist. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 why is we why are I meeting them people? I'm not finna do nothing with them people. <laughs> why is you talking about me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not finna do nothing with these people. Breaking me up. Them people shouldn't even know I exist at all. You shouldn't be over there running your mouth about me to nobody. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, Tom, here go next. Can she meet your friends? Okay, yeah. now that's a good question. That that's a good question. Yeah. Like yes, that. you can. Oh. Oh, but okay. only on side piece night. <laughs> you just that see you gonna that. see you gonna meet some more side pieces. <laughs> <laughs> but what you ain't finna do is be meeting them in their wife night. That's not your <laughs> It ain't your night. You side piece night. You know wow. other side piece. Wow. <sighs> side piece night. Okay, Tommy. You're very calm, Uncle. Yeah, because I already don't know it all. You know, just got to be Tommy. Can yes, she sir. have a picture of you? You just got to have uh-huh. one. You you go on my Facebook. Uh-huh. Screenshot a picture of me. And my family, crop oh, that God. down, crop, crop that down where you got only me. Uh, now you got it. Uh, there Facebook you go. Page. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, his profile. <laughs> okay, Tommy. <laughs> really? I'm, I'm listening. Cannot. If she asks you this, if she says, I love you, mm-hmm. do you love me? What's your answer? Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not finna say the hell. I keep a, a bunch of ditto. Now, I ditto you to death. Ditto, ditto, all that ditto. <laughs> but I ain't, I'm not finna see here and have the L word come out. No. Ditto. You're stupid, ditto. <laughs> ditto. Ditto. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, I taught this young man everything he knows. Okay? Uh-huh. Right now, mm-hmm, uh, the nephew is in the building with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? So I got to drop y'all down one of the uh, classics here. Uh, and, the name, and the name of the prank is Keep Sweat. That's what it's called. It's called Keep okay. Sweat. Cat dog, okay. let's sweat it up. Let's go. Hello. Hey, I'm trying to reach Manny. Is this Manny? No, nah, this ain't Manny, man. This is Sweat. Who's this, man? Hey, this is Raheem, man. Uh, wow, this is Sweat. Okay. Hey, uh, Mr. Keith, you, uh, we, we got we got people down here. You're supposed to be here at the record store, man, right here in Harlem. And, and we got people wrapped around the building. You're supposed to be here signing these CDs, man. But it's been over an hour. These people have been standing here waiting on y'all. Yo, man, I don't know nothing about no record store. And, uh, and number two, I don't know nothing about doing no signing, man. Who set this up, man? I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, the name I was given was Manny. Who was who was Manny? Manny's my road manager, but he don't set things up, man. He's a road manager. He's not my manager. He just handled my stuff on the road, but I was never told I was supposed to be nowhere to do anything, man. I mean, normally when somebody tell me, me and them have an understanding that I, I, I book what I'm supposed to do, so I don't know nothing about this, my brother. Okay, well, you know, we got to get this taken care of. We got people wrapped around the building. We got a table here laid out. We got uh, pens and everything for you to sign these CDs, man. We got over 100 people outside the uh, store. My brother, I, I, nobody told me about no no signings or no nothing, man. I mean... I don't know nothing about no signing, for real. Okay, well, are you hearing what I'm saying to you, man? We got people 
outside the building waiting for you to arrive to sign some CDs. Now, what I'm supposed to tell these people? Yo, I don't know what you're supposed to tell them, man. I mean, you know, I'm, and, and it's kind of like you're raising your voice, dude. I don't, I don't, I don't I, first of all, I don't know even know who you are calling me like this. I told you, man, I didn't set nothing up, man. And, you know, I mean, I don't even know who gave you my number. You know what I'm saying? For, I mean, I, I don't handle it. All this information was on the fax machine. I got this as a contact number. Manny is the person I'm supposed to be talking to. And Mr. Sweat was supposed to arrive here at 12 noon. Now, here it is. It's, it's 115, 120, man, and you ain't here. And we got people wrapped around the building. We've been advertising this for the last two weeks. I mean, the album dropped My today. Brother, I don't think you – I mean, no disrespect to you, but I don't think you hear me, man. I, I, I don't know nothing about a signing. If I knew about a signing or I knew I had a signing session, I wouldn't have the people sitting around or standing around like that. That's not what I do. But no one informed me that nothing like this was going down today. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, okay, but look, man, now that you realize people are here waiting, what are you going to do? What am I supposed to tell them? Man, there's no way in the world I can get down there and do a signing at this time, late time right now, man. I mean, you man, know. But you need to get your bag in that. I'm, you, mean, you need, you need to, get, try to try to get yourself down here, man. Well, first of all, and, first and, of all and, I mean, you know, I, what did you just say? I, I think you just called me out my name or something, man. What did you just say to me, man? No, no, no. I'm saying I, I'm saying you need to try and come on down and sign sign these CDs for these people, man. 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 These people are here. They're waiting in line. They've been waiting over an hour on you. Now, this this not going to look good. This is the date. Dude, dude, I mean, dude. I, we, got your, we got your CD almost on every show, dude, man. I, I'm, I'm feeling you, and I, I'm, I understand now. I understand what you're saying to me, but there's no way. I can get down there, man. We, you just gonna have to reschedule this, or we gonna have to reschedule this. I apologize for the, you know, misunderstanding. But bottom line is, I knew nothing about this. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on, Mr. Anderson. He's, this is Mr. Sweat. He's saying he don't know anything about being here. I'm telling him we got people all wrapped all around the building. He don't care. Yo, yo, dude. I didn't say I didn't he, care. I said he, there's nothing I could do. I didn't say that. I didn't say that, man. Don't put words in my mouth, my brother. What do you want me to Will do? You re Mr. All you got to do is reschedule it for another time, man. That's what you do. I, hold on, man. I'm talking to my boss. I'm trying to hold figure out how to up, get... Man. We got people finna get mad, man, because you're not hold here. Up, hold okay? Up, hold up. You, now, whoever Manny... Manny needs his <laughs> whoop, man. He does. Yo, I don't, Say what? I don't know nothing about that, man. I ain't got nothing to do with that, man. All I know is that nobody told me about that. You know, I'll call Manny, and I ask who said it because I don't do things unless I know where, where it's coming from. There ain't no way you can get your... You can get yourself hold down. Up, hold here. up, you keep. First of all, man, you don't talk to me like I'm your child, man. You keep saying there's no way I can get my, you know, you back up with, on what you're saying, dude. Hey, man, hey, man, we having a problem. This is supposed to be one of the biggest days of our record store. We got your CD on every shelf, and you you just so calm and collect like it's not a problem no, with you. No, what I'm supposed to do, man? When I didn't know nothing about it, I understand it's a problem. It's a problem because it made me look like I'm a no show. But dude, I'm telling you again, I knew nothing about this, man. Hold on, hold on one second. Take all his damn CDs off the shelf. Every last yo, dude, one of them. Yo, yo, I don't know what you're talking about, man. you losing your darn mind right now, man. I'm not trying to disrespect you, dude, but you're really losing your mind right now. you doing something you ain't got no business, though, man. I said reschedule the situation, man. You know, tomorrow, the day How after How are we rescheduling when the album drops today, yo, man? Okay, well, today. well, there's nothing I can do about this, dude. Nothing. Who you, wait, wait, hold, sound like you raising your voice I ain't at raising me. raising my voice, man, because you now, you now you disrespect me. You don't call my phone going off like 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 I'm somebody's child, like I'm your child, dude. Man, you don't talk to me like that, man. Come oh, on. So you can't stop what you're doing and bring your butt down here to the record store. No, I so can't, we think I people can't won't stop be what I'm doing. No, 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 I can't stop what I'm doing, man. So what you're doing right now that's so important, you can't come. Man, it ain't none of your business what I'm doing right now, dude. I'm saying I know I knew nothing about this, man. So I'm not gonna keep going back and forth with you like 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 I gotta explain to you why I can't I gotta stop what I'm doing to come down there. I knew nothing about it. It's not my fault, dude. You need to take this up with somebody who scheduled this because I didn't schedule it. There's a right and a wrong way to look a right and a wrong way to do somebody, Mr. Sweat. Oh, man, come on, now you reciting them, my, my songs, man. Come okay. on, man. Okay, now okay, no problem. Songs. I'm just going to go old. out here and tell everybody in the line, Mr. Sweat don't want to come, man. okay? And I'm taking all of the man. damn CDs man. off the shelf because you don't want to stand up and be the celebrity that you're supposed to be. Man, okay, now, you know what, man? You do what you got to do, man. At this point, you do what you got to do, man. But, the, you, yo, who am I talking to anyway? This man? Raheem, man. Raheem. Raheem. I work here at the okay. store. Okay, well, I'll see you, Raheem. You go ahead and do what you get ready to do, and I'll come and see you, dude. What, 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 what you mean you going to see me? 
What that means? I'll see you. I'll see you. Yeah, I'll see you. That's what it means. I'll see you. Okay, because cause the bottom line is, man, Tommy said you was going to come. He the one said you was going to come sign. Tommy, who? Now you, Raheem, Tommy, who the, who the hell is the Tommy? Tommy, man. Nephew Tommy <laughs> from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> Swear I got your <laughs> Boy, man, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> man, y'all tripping, boy, for real. <laughs> man, you, you, you don't even understand what you give me make me do, dude. <laughs> you crazy, boy. I mean, you know what I mean? Y'all don't have anything better to do than call me and mess with me, man. <laughs> I knew the album was dropping, man. I said, I'm getting it today. You, you man, good? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Boy, you crazy, boy. Man, let me get off this phone, man. Y'all do what you do. Boy, you don't even understand. Oh, man. swear, man, I had to get you, dog. Look here, you know, I know you got your show, but you got to tell me what is the baddest radio show in the morning. The Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. Get off my phone, nephew Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> He <laughs> got a little gangsta in him, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you didn't know? Uh -huh. He got a little gangsta in him. Did you know that? I ain't no kid that had that little gangsta gangsta like that. Can't play with everybody. Mm -hmm. I used to work okay. for Keith with an F. Keith. Yeah, K-E-I-F-F. -E -F -F. Keith. <laughs> or you can do K-E-E-F. <laughs> Real Keith. <laughs> that was funny, Neff. Mm -hmm. Funny Love King him. of Pranks. Happy of belated pranks. birthday to our boy Keith Sweat. To Keith! Okay. Oh, we gotta go. Yes. Coming up next, right. it's the Strawberry Letter <laughs> subject. I taught this young man everything he knows. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's Tanya Sam, host of the Money Moves podcast powered by Greenwood, financial literacy podcast where we get straight to the steps to financial stability, wealth, and abundance. And we are back for season two with guests like Will Packer, Rich Fresh, Annie Gonzalez, and so many more entrepreneurs and experts sharing how they are making their money move. You know, if I look back, I mean, to be in that role at 25, right. was I talented? Was I skilled? Was I capable? Absolutely. Did I have all the tools? Absolutely not. <laughs> Tune in for new episodes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to start getting your money moving. Before I could ever walk into a room and say, give me, you know, tens of millions of dollars to produce a girl's trip, I needed to show that I could take a much smaller amount of money and be successful with that. I could raise a little bit of money and produce a little movie and then turn that little movie into a success. Listen to season two of Money Moves powered by Greenwood on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The one thing that can never be replaced in our vast and ceaseless human story is live music. It has been with us since the beginning, and so it will continue to stay. In our sacred venues, in the hole-in-the-wall dives, in festival fields full of people shoulder to shoulder. I'm Will Daly. For years, I've been on the road playing shows and seeing America through live music. This summer, I'll hit the stage with season two of Sound of Our Town. Ten cities, 12 episodes, every other Thursday. Thanks to your ears on season one, we get to explore the live music venues and culture of a new American city with each new episode. Our tour continues into the kind of venues you want to get to when you land in Detroit, Providence, Denver, or Seattle. This is a podcast about hope and redemption. The live music lover and the Vaticans of sound that give us sanctuary and a place to celebrate and commiserate no matter what is going on in our lives. Listen to Sound of Our Town on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships on, I hear you, Steve, on dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Hey. That's for you, Jay. That's for you. <laughs> Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, I taught this young man everything he knows. Dear Stephen Shirley, I have a confession to make, and I know I can count on Steve to give it to me straight. I am a divorced female, and I work as a corporate trainer. I'm 49 years old, and I have one daughter and a granddaughter. Last fall, I was called to train staff at an insurance agency. One of the male trainees got my attention and asked me for a business card 
card before I left. He left a message on my office phone and invited me to dinner the next night. I knew he was a bit younger than I am, but I was flattered and went on a date with him. We have so much in common. It's hard to believe he's only 25. After that date, we've been inseparable, and I've had a hard time hiding him from my daughter and my family. I've taken him on several business trips with me, and he looks great in all of the suits and nice shoes I've bought him. Uh, I've taught him etiquette and how to appreciate the finer things. We took a cooking class, and he knows how to hand roll sushi for me. I showed him the art of making love to a real woman, and he mastered it. He's basically the perfect man for me, but the age difference will be a problem in the long run. I know my family and friends will judge me because he's two years younger than my daughter. He wants to get married so we can live together, and he wants me to meet his mother and grandmother. You know this isn't going to go over well with them. Men have always met and married younger women, but it's not as accepted when women do it. I would hope that I'm everything this man needs and he won't want a younger woman someday. Can this work or have I wasted all of my training on the wrong man? Um, okay, so do you have a training thing going on here? Uh, <laughs> sounds like sounds like you're a sugar mama uh, uh, because you're buying him so much stuff, okay? Um, you know, the, you have a lot to be concerned about in this relationship. You, you're you a, a mother and a granddaughter, and this guy is just two years younger than your daughter. I mean, we talk about this a lot on the show, the double standard. There are things that women can do that men can't or, or, or don't or won't do, and there are things that men can do that women can't or don't do. Uh, you said it in the letter. Men have always met and married younger, but uh, it's not as accepted as uh, when women do it, and mainly that's because women have a biological clock inside of them where we have to do things like have children at a certain age. Um, and the facts are that you are twice this young man's age, which, mean, which means you have way more life experience than him. Uh, you came in as the trainer. He's the trainee, which means you have way more experience than him. You're, you're buying him suits, as I mentioned, and shoes and stuff. You also have to think that that, um, you know, he might want kids of his own. And that's where you have to think about your biological clock and the time. You know, he might want kids at some point. Uh, as far as the love goes, of course, we all know the heart wants what it wants. It doesn't care about age or race or religion or anything like that. But you, as the older, more experienced person, you have to let your 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 thinking get involved here in your head. Um, you have to think about these things if he wants kids in the future and what the future might hold. Yeah. Yeah, he will probably look at younger women. You guys, you're twice his age, okay? Um, I, I don't know if you'll be able to live with that or not as you get older. I mean, I'm sure you're beautiful right now. I'm sure you are. Um, but, you know, you got to think about that, that 25-year-old age difference. I, I don't think that's going to work, uh, you know. And if you can live with all of that stuff, then go for it. I, I don't think you should. I wouldn't do it. This has nothing nothing to do with your your what your uh, family or your friends say or anything like that. It's not their business. This is a decision that you have to make. And I think as the adult in this situation, um, you know, I, I don't I wouldn't do it. I'll put it like that. Steve, you already know. <laughs> you already know. So you want Steve to give it to you straight because, you know, he's going to give it to you straight. Surely That's gave it to you. Mm -hmm. Surely gave it to you. <laughs> but since you want to hear from Steve, here we go. I'm going to point out some things Shirley pointed out and point out some stuff Shirley didn't point out. Uh, you're a corporate trainer. You're 49 years old. You have one daughter and a granddaughter. 49. Let's just round it off, say you're 50. Women don't like to round it off up. So let me just go and get to it. Because you're about to be 50 any damn way. Might have had a birthday by the time we read this letter on the air anyway. So let's just say you're 50. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, let's go. You got a daughter that's 27. And you got a granddaughter. You train people. That's your calling in life. You train people. 
So you go to this uh, agency, you're training some people, dude got your attention, asked for a card, left a message, invited you to dinner next night. You know, I knew he was a bit younger than I am, but I was flattered. Because you're bored. <laughs> you divorced. You've been single for a while. You're bored. You figure, hey, you've been on this session. Let me go on out to dinner with him. We have so much in common. What the hell <laughs> you got in common with a boy that's 25 years, a young man who's 25 years younger than you? What y'all both like to eat? Mm. You don't play video games. You ain't into sport. He like black dresses. You had on the black dress. That ain't nothing in common. Hang on, Steve. Hang on. <laughs> All right. We'll be back with part two of Steve's re- uh, Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Title of today's letter, I Taught This Young Man Everything He Knows. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. I taught this young man everything he knows. Well, you a teacher, you a trainer. You're 49 years old. You go out on this uh, insurance thing to train a group of people. Young dude catches eye, asks you for a business card, invites you to dinner. You flatter because he's at your age. You go out with him. He's much younger than you. But you sit there and all of a sudden y'all got everything in common. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. And I'll prove it to you in the letter. Lady... You have so much in common. Y'all don't like the same music, and y'all don't go to the same places. Mm. Y'all ain't had the same life in children. Y'all ain't had the same life experiences. You can make children. He can't. You got kids. He don't. Mm. He play video games. You don't. He got a family. He ain't got no family. You do. What y'all got in common? (laughs) I sure would like to know what it is y'all got in common. Or what did you sit there and fabricate in your mind that made it so good? Well, let me tell you what. Well, after that date, we've been inseparable. So much for in common. I've had a hard time hiding him from my daughter and my family. Listen to me. I've taken him on several business trips with me, and he looks great in all of the suits and nice shoes I bought him. You know why? Because he was wearing sneakers and T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> You had to buy him them shoes and them suits because you couldn't take his T-shirt wearing ass nowhere with you. I thought y'all had a lot in common. He don't know how to dress. You taught him just your letter. I taught this young man everything he know. He ain't know nothing. You taught him everything. He didn't know nothing. You taught him everything. And you got a lot in common. What? He didn't know how to hand roll sushi when you met him. <laughs> now you got him hand rolling sushi. Let me tell you something. I went in a sushi restaurant in Atlanta one night. And this mm-hmm. is years ago. Years ago. Mm-hmm. Kings of comedy years. And it was two black guys behind the counter at the sushi place. I turned around and walked right out. The two black dudes what? say, Steve, come on in, man. The sushi good. I said, y'all know good and hell well. Y'all don't know nothing about cutting no damn sushi. <laughs> <laughs> that is not our job. If you back no, here frying do. fish, I sit down. Yeah, we do, but you Steve. slicing raw fish, boy, stop. <laughs> now, you done got him to hand roll sushi for you. I showed him the art of making love to a real woman, and he mastered it. He, he okay, you can say he mastered it. Right. He done got better at it. You can't get worse at sex. You no, just you, get you better should. at it. So he's teachable. He's basically the perfect man for me. Mm. Except you can't take him around your daughter, your family, or your friends. But the age difference will be a problem in the long run. No, it's a problem now. So why are you talking about this is a problem in the long run? You can't take him nowhere. He don't know nothing. You done taught him everything. It's a problem now. I know my family and friends going to judge me because he's two years younger than my daughter. It's a problem now, not in the long run. This problem ain't going to get better. You going to get older. And the gap is going to be more obvious. He wants me to meet his mother and grandmother. Let me tell you something. They going to eat your ass alive. You go in there with this boy's mama and grandmama. He don't even, he's so stupid. You didn't teach him what was going to happen when he walked your old ass in there with his mama and grandmama, did you? 
<laughs> Who's going to be worse, though, Steve, the mom or the grandmother? The grandmama going to kill uh-huh. me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, so you one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> mm, you an Eastern you star. Mm. <laughs> oh, she got oh, put yeah. her glasses on. Come on. I saw you down at the hall, didn't I? <laughs> you look like the girl that work at the tavern I go to. <laughs> See, it's gonna get bad for you. They're gonna eat your they're yeah. gonna eat you alive. I would you be. you walk your old ass in there with this daughter that's two years older than this boy, they already know what you did. They already know you done, you done whipped him. Because see this boy, he's whipped. And they know you done put it on him like he ain't never had it before. And now, yeah. you he want to marry you? Has he lost his rabbit ass mind? Yeah. Talk Has to this boy, to you, you, done, you done whipped him <laughs> this bad that he wants to marry you? Mm-hmm. And you gonna go in there and face his mother and grand? I hope you do. Well, she said you finna find. Letter, you I don't know. give a damn. Uh-huh. You know this ain't gonna go over uh-huh. well with them. Okay, so you once again she see knows. when you said in this letter this is gonna be a problem in the long run. Mm-hmm. I keep telling you it's a problem now. You hiding him from your friends. You got him here from your daughter. He's two years younger than your daughter. You got a granddaughter. You take him everywhere. You done taught him everything because his ass stupid. He ain't know nothing. You know, men have always met and married younger women, but it's not as accepted when women do it. I would hope that I'm everything this man needs and he won't want a young woman someday. What? <laughs> his mom. <laughs> what? Who the hell don't want a younger woman or something? What? <laughs> what, what? You all this stuff you done taught him to master. You don't think he don't want to show this to nobody? <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you, Steve. We'll leave. Thank you, Steve. We'll leave it right there. Post your comments on today's strawberry letter at Steve Harvey FM. She crazy. She know this ain't gonna work. She knows on Instagram and Facebook. And coming up at but I do minutes. want you to go meet his mom and grandma. Though. Please do that for me <laughs> and let and us right know us how back. it turned out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, does marriage make you a better person? That is the question on the table right now. Hell this is an- no. Hey, hey, <laughs> let me get it out. Oh, t- he, he already said. <laughs> it ain't the been a year, huh? of The newlyweds <laughs> on this show. A new study from Tilburg University in the Netherlands suggests that marriage can make you a better person. Specifically, getting hitched makes you more forgiving and more likely to exercise self-control. All right, that's what it says. Who they study? This is a new study. They studied married married people, people that are in a marriage. So they didn't come by my house and study a damn thing. You said the Netherlands? From the Netherlands. It suggests that marriage can make you a better person, specifically getting hitched makes you more forgiving, it makes you more forgiving, if Tommy you're it says. To the right person. And it makes you more likely to exercise self control. Right. No. If you married to the wrong person. No. Nothing, Tommy, no. That's in the Netherlands. No. No. What are the one they got for over here? Thank you. Because, <laughs> man, if you marry the wrong person, it will not make you a better person. It make you better at doing certain things. <laughs> like what? Huh? You become a lot more crafty. A better cheater. <laughs> Your ass gets real crafty. You the wrong one. Your ass can learn some things. Yes, you can. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you, Chief. What did you, you learn? Uh, like, not, not how to go home? <laughs> Dog, you will, you will learn about spots. You will know about a lot of uh, restaurants. You have a lot of little cubby holes. Cubby of these sitting restaurants. You know how to walk in places and spot cameras. <laughs> so you learn a lot the back way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you use your phone different. Uh-huh. See, when I was out there, wasn't no phone cameras, wasn't no GPS, wasn't none of that. When you were out there? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. when I was out there. See, all this now, I already know I'm good because oh, yeah. w- where I'm going to go? <laughs> that ain't, sure? ain't, ain't, ain't nobody going to yeah. see me. Ain't nobody going to see That's me. That's why I just kept my ass home now. You got to turn that GPS off your phone. You got to turn that off as soon as you leave the house. Uh Hey, dog, if you're famous, you can't do nothing. You just can't do nothing. Just go home. Yes, go Uh home. If you're famous and you're not happy, just get yourself a divorce, man, because you're going to get seen. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and it will be a scandal. Dog, and they're going to put you out there, dog. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to just be freaking 
Did you did you want to say that aloud, or did yeah. you want to keep that to yourself? <laughs> he said, "Just go." <laughs> they ought to at we least have a miserable me. meeting or something. You can, you can talk to other miserable ass. You know what I'm saying? Why did he get married? I, I didn't. Know. Y'all ain't tell me everything. Y'all Good. did. Woo! All right, uh, we'll be back. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's Tanya Sam, host of the Money Moves podcast powered by Greenwood, financial literacy podcast where we get straight to the steps to financial stability, wealth, and abundance. And we are back for season two with guests like Will Packer, Rich Fresh, Annie Gonzalez, and so many more entrepreneurs and experts sharing how they are making their money move. You know, if I look back, I mean, to be in that role at 25, right. was I talented? Was I skilled? Was I capable? Absolutely. Did I have all the tools? Absolutely not. <laughs> Tune in for new episodes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to start getting your money moving. Before I could ever walk into a room and say, give me, you know, tens of millions of dollars to produce a girl's trip, I needed to show that I could take a much smaller amount of money and be successful with that. I could raise a little bit of money and produce a little movie and then turn that little movie into a success. Listen to season two of Money Moves powered by Greenwood on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The one thing that can never be replaced in our vast and ceaseless human story is live music. It has been with us since the beginning, and so it will continue to stay. In our sacred venues, in the -the hole-in-the-wall dives, in festival fields full of people shoulder to shoulder. I'm Will Daly. For years I've been on the road playing shows and seeing America through live music. This summer I'll hit the stage with season two of Sound of Our Town. Ten cities, twelve episodes, every other Thursday. Thanks to your ears on season one, we get to explore the live music venues and culture of a new American city with each new episode. Our tour continues into the kind of venues you want to get to when you land in Detroit, Providence, Denver, or Seattle. This is a podcast about hope and redemption. The live music lover and the Vatican's of sound that give us sanctuary and a place to celebrate and commiserate no matter what is going on in our lives. Listen to Sound of Our Town on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Here's a question a guy asked his friend to email the morning show to get your opinion, Steve. Uh, My wife went out of town this past weekend, and it was a good thing because on Saturday, a young guy, maybe around 20 years old, rang my doorbell. He asked me my name, asked if I once lived in Memphis, and asked me if I knew a woman whose name I won't mention. When th- when those checked out, he then put, hit, put out his hand and told me he was my son. I lived in Tennessee two decades ago, and I dated the woman for a little while, so the math checks out. And this was right before my wife and I got married, but the kid's mom didn't tell me any of this. I invited the young man in, and we talked more about it. He's trying to put his life together. I was, uh, it was a cool conversation, and we both agreed to get a DNA test to confirm or deny the possibility that he is my son, and yes, he favors me. Either way, how do I break this Maury Povich, you are, uh, or you are not the father, situation to my wife? Do I tell her everything about the visit, the DNA test, or wait for the results, and then tell her I have a son? Mm. Yeah. I would, I would, I would take the DNA test, and then when it comes back positive that that's your son, then you got mm-hmm. to tell your wife exactly how it happened. This but guy came to my house. Oh hell no! Oh hell no! <laughs> oh, <laughs> say what? Be done. You oh, Did, don't tell her about the no, visit sir. first no, before no. the DNA test. No, 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 no. No, so, it's easy. To, no, no. So you when do she not. comes home on the weekend, what happened this weekend? What you do? Nothing. Not at all. Oh, not nothing. I'll, I'll, I'll watch a Been TV. Been here all myself all day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I promise you, I'm not mentioning. So he came no. over to you. How come you didn't tell me this right then, baby? Uh-huh. Listen, I didn't know whether this young man was telling the truth or not. Mm-hmm. I do remember this woman over 20 years ago. It was before we got married. I do remember this. But if it wasn't no DNA, it ain't no need of him talking to me about this. I find out it's true. I have a son. So, you know, 20 years means nothing to her because this happened right before the wedding. He was born before the wedding. Yeah, but I'm just saying you do realize that. Well, at nine months, 
Nine mean? months, you know, all as long as long as he born before this wedding. That's all yeah. we got. We we got something. So you mean you knew the, about, uh, you, you knew about this woman while you were walking down while we were walking down the aisle while we were I had I had known of this woman <laughs> before we got married, but after I found out we were serious, I broke it off. Sounds like a good time to lose him. I was younger back then. I was younger back then. <laughs> You'll be able to get past this 20-year thing. Oh, and then easy. see, that's No, no, no. Easy. Listen to me. Oh, no, no, okay. no. It's not going to be easy, but see, you out of the child support stage. You know, oh. ain't no money got to come out the house. Oh. You know, it's easier to, you know, this is my son. I didn't know it. Then you got to do the right thing as a man because he's trying to put his life together. So you got to help this your son at this point. Uh, I don't think this is going. This is not going to lose cause him his marriage. It's going to create a whole lot of questions. He going to get tapped a lot in the middle of the night. <laughs> yes, Excuse he me. Is. Yes, he is. Hey, let me so let me ask you something. So oh, when we happened. went to Cancun, because, because the you were seeing her when? Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. But you was in Memphis. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. In uh-huh. 90. Yeah. Yes. All of that. Yes. No, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. In 2000, though, uh-huh. we uh-huh. we went to see my mama in uh-huh. Texas. Uh-huh. 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 Black uh-huh. women can uh-huh. do math. Yes, oh, we yeah. can. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. So when you was driving yes. to yes. see me in Dallas, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Which way you go? Because uh-huh. uh-huh. that's 40. 40, yeah. uh-huh. 40, once you, you come know. down Nashville, you hit 40. Yeah. And then yeah. you come across to Arkansas to get on 30. That's right. You must have stopped. You went mm-hmm. to see this heifer uh-huh. right before you yeah. saw me. It happened right when before that boy, the wedding, When that boy's birthday? When that baby birthday? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> More of today's trending stories on the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, Mr. Green Drink himself, Mr. Elevate You. How's it going? The product is You know out. what? The product is going good. I want to mm-hmm. thank everybody out there for all of your support for the Elevate You launch at Walmart. Because of this, Elevate You products got sold out rather quickly at Walmart.com. Mm-hmm. And get all you want. You can get the greens and stick packs, the original flavor, the terry chart, and the chocolate. And we have two new, three new products, gummies. They're for your digestive health. They're for your immune system. And they are for your metabolism. If you want to speed up your metabolism, feel more energy. We got them in gummies now. They taste really, really good. But they're very, very effective. I use them all the time. Because better health should be available for everybody. So check out a Walmart near you or go to Walmart.com. Just go to Walmart next, Walmart.com to make sure you get your greens and your gummies. So it is back in business. We sold out so quick at Walmart, they were just gone. And now they're back. Walmart.com, this product is the hottest new product on the market for your health. And I want everybody to get healthy, man, especially in my generation. And now younger people are getting hip to it, too. My daughter is using it. My daughter. All right. All right. Well, congratulations. Go to ElevateU.com. Thank you, Steve. Coming up at 33 yeah. minutes after the hour, we will play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for a round of Would You Rather. All right, guys. Here we go. Would you rather work four-day weeks or work two months on and one month off? Hey, Ambie. Think about that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I want what? two months on. I do even want One month that. off. Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 Hell yeah. yeah. What, what Skip that a four-day work week. <laughs> yeah. I better do them four-day weeks. I better do that. That one month off, I'm going to forget I'm working. I got to do that. <laughs> no. no. You're going to be wilding. <laughs> two months on, uh-huh. one month off. Yes. You like that, Steve? Yeah. I like that, Steve. Hell yeah, all yeah. day. Because you were in Vegas for 30 days. It makes sense. <laughs> yes, baby, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Would you rather have another 10 years with your partner or a one-night stand with your celebrity crush? Hey. Mm. 
A lot of sad. Just, just A. Just okay, for so radio. Junior, I, I with, don't understand. Would you rather have another 10 years with your partner or would you rather have a one night stand with your celebrity crush? What? Oh, you, you don't get your partner no more? Mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, you have both of them? Yeah. Okay, you no, you cannot. Uh-uh. <laughs> Junior no, picks no. A. I'm taking the ten years. Right. What the hell I want with one? I'm gonna take a to a hell of a <laughs> Oh, you sound you said it. Why do you sound upset lady. about it? I gone over here where I've been just to <laughs> Till Helen, once again, now. <laughs> you know the real shocker for you when you discover Helen don't want you. <laughs> I sure wish I could arrange that. <laughs> she don't want. She don't want the one night stand. <laughs> right. Or or the ten years with you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather be in jail for five years or be in a coma for a decade? Jail for five or a coma for ten? Ooh. No, I'm going to do this jail. I'm going to take the jail. Really? Yeah, I'm, Hell yeah. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna take, that get, I'm take that coma and give me some rest. I, <laughs> night, <laughs> night. <laughs> Boy, coma, when you come out that coma, you and I can't tell you how poor your ass is. I don't like people just coming in and visiting me when I'm in the hospital. Yeah. No, you're getting all your no, no, you know what you're going to wait. You know what you're going to look like? A beard. How long will his beard be? Oh, my God. <laughs> no. You would rather go to jail for, jail five, for five years? years. I can't do that jail than thing, Than be in man. a coma for ten I'm just laying up here. I ain't. I done missed everything. <laughs> I'm hilarious in jail. Dog, I get me some. Dog, I get some groups together in prison and. Yeah. What? <laughs> nah. I'm in there cutting deep. I'm with you, nephew. Oh, on that one. All right. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up uh, 49 minutes after the hour. It's our last break of the day, and we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's Tanya Sam, host of the Money Moves podcast powered by Greenwood, a financial literacy podcast where we get straight to the steps to financial stability, wealth, and abundance. And we are back for season two with guests like Will Packer, Rich Fresh, Annie Gonzalez, and so many more entrepreneurs and experts sharing how they are making their money move. You know, if I look back, I mean, to be in that role at 25, right. was I talented? Was I skilled? Was I capable? Absolutely. Did I have all the tools? Absolutely not. <laughs> Tune in for new episodes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to start getting your money moving. Before I could ever walk into a room and say, give me, you know, tens of millions of dollars to produce a girl's trip, I needed to show that I could take a much smaller amount of money and be successful with that. I could raise a little bit of money and produce a little movie and then turn that little movie into a success. Listen to season two of Money Moves powered by Greenwood on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Steve, we're ready for your closing remarks. I'm so happy they're back. All right, everybody. Uh, But I hear him saying it to me all the time. People come to you, ask you for money because I know you got it because you're doing better than them. Well, you work harder than them. So quite naturally, you should be doing better than them. Now, they come to you and lay this guilt, man. You you, you, done, you done came up and all us and over all of us and left us back here. And, man, we so proud of you. Let me hold my father used to say, if you didn't know me, what would you do? So I started incorporating that in my life. If you didn't have my number, who would you call? I cannot be everybody's emergency. If you are everybody's emergency phone call, you need a new group. They going to bring you down, man. I'm telling you, they're going to bring you down. And when you go down, guess what? They going to get another emergency number. They not going to be there for you. All these people that use you as their emergency, do you have the ability to use them as your emergency? I think not. It's time to look at getting a new group. Now, you can sever the ties with these people now, or you can wait until a major event occurs that's going to cause you have to break it off. And it's going to be a lot more painful and a lot more costly. 
you know. But Bishop Jake said one time, sometimes you have to let people go so they can be freed up to go be who they supposed to be. Because some people just hanging on because it's comfortable. Because you've made it comfortable for people. And I'm talking to everybody out there. This ain't for me or people who have employees. This is for people who have people in their lives that's constantly pulling on you, man. For $20 here, $40 here, 100 over here, my light bill went off. They cut this off. They calling me. I'm behind on my taxes. My income tax check ain't here yet. Man, oh man, oh man. How many times do you get that? Stop being everybody's emergency phone call. Because if they didn't know you, what would they do? You know what my father used to say? When they don't know you, what would they do? They need to get on, get to doing it. You can't save everybody because they'll bring you down. If you're the smartest person in your group, you need a new group. Y'all have a great day, okay? Uh, I'm going to have a good weekend, too. Steve Harvey contest, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. What's up, y'all? I'm Brian Ford, artisan baker and host of the new podcast, Flaky Biscuit. I'm going to help y'all learn how to cook and bake new things as we get to know our guests through their favorite nostalgic meal. So every time you have a guest, you cook their favorite food. You already know. That's, That's right. Crazy. That's what we do at Flaky Biscuit, man. Baby, I'll be hoping somebody say I like freeze pops. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm like, what? Listen to Flaky Biscuit every Tuesday on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Want to learn how to be a master of business without going back to school? This summer, the Planet Money podcast is offering its very own MBA. Enjoy classic Planet Money stories about the fundamentals of business and hear a fancy pants business school professor break down the concepts. Whether you want to start your own side hustle or just survive in the job you have, a little business know-how will make you richer. Eh, at least in knowledge. Every Wednesday till Labor Day, listen to Planet Money from NPR on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, everybody. Are you ready for a brand new podcast that you had no idea existed? I'm Roy Scovel. And I'm Daniel Van Kirk. And it's the Pen Pals Podcast. Maybe you've had a pen pal before. Well, you have two of them right now. You send us your letters about anything going on in your life. Got a mean grandma? Need a new haircut? Whatever it is, send it to us. And we have guests like Will Ferrell, Andy Samberg, Rose Byrne, Brett Goldstein, and Mandy Moore. Listen to the Pen Pals Podcast on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. This is the unbelievable but true story of George Remus. He was an eccentric and genius lawyer who figured out how to game the system during Prohibition. Remus is the biggest man in the business. But George Remus's wild existence took a dark and shocking turn, leading to betrayal, revenge, and one of the most sensational murder trials in American history. Listen to Remus, the Mad Bootleg King, every Tuesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.